nitpicks. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Nitpicks. And Alan, I seen that. So this is actually the end of the podcast. Uh, the podcast was over two hours long. We talked about all six episodes. And, and we Chubbs. Deci- and Chubbs. Can't forget about Chubbs. Uh, we decided that we're going to, instead of putting out a two-hour episode, we're just going to put out like six 20-minute episodes or something like that of each well, individual. One, on... <laughs> well, some, one of them will be like 40 minutes and one of them will be like two minutes. That's but, yeah. true. Yeah. But we're, we're, I'm going to split them all up. And so this will be one of those six episodes. It'll be the first one, obviously. You're not going to have this intro being like episode four. No, I'm just going to reuse this intro for all. Oh, okay. But, but I'm going to leave that part in the intro as well. Okay. But it's okay. We can disagree. You can love um, this episode. And then after that is Metalhead. I hated which... Metalhead. I'm going to defend Metalhead. <laughs> it was so boring. And it the, was better than the first three episodes, in my opinion. It it just was so slow, and I think a part of it was only one, like there was not any dialogue going on, so it, everything was just on the visuals, and so the animation no, good of, visuals. of the dog really stood out, and the dog was so convenient for the story when it needed to be, but yet so constricted for the story when it, when it needed it to be, that it just felt so unbelievable. Like it, it could do anything. It could jump into a car. It could shoot someone in the back of the head. It could pick locks, open doors, get a knife attached to its arm, could find things in the forest. But yet when it needed to, it ran out of solar battery and it couldn't climb a tree and it couldn't do all this stuff. And it just felt like such a weak. The only thing it couldn't do was climb a tree, right? Was there anything else it couldn't do? Couldn't climb the tree. The battery died, but then recharged instantly. Um, it couldn't see through the paint. Um, it couldn't, it couldn't really find her in the house, which I felt like it would have been better at that. Um, yeah, that didn't bother me. And it, to me, when I was watching it, it felt like a, almost like a parody of slasher movies, like a Friday the 13th, Jason, but with technology. I thought it was a, it was a better version of those films. Um, well, those things are kind of a specific thing. They know that they're kind of a joke. And this felt like it was very serious. And it didn't work. Not for me. I think but. this is all about, to be honest, like the way I see it is mm. it's, it's 40 minutes of a relentless, like machine, um, chasing one person. Yes. And the two of them, like basically, you know, trying to, trying to get rid of the other one. And in, in the end, in the end, like both of them lose. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's just all about like emotional investment. Like if you're emotionally invested in this woman, then like this episode will be good. Yeah. Because you'll want her to survive and you'll be like tense when the robot's near. You'll be tense when like it's cre- creeping into the house. You'll, you'll be, you'll be very scared mm-hmm. for her. And for me, I was just emotionally invested in her. So like for me, it was just 40 minutes of like, a really like fun short short like 40 minute film with with a very interesting like designed robot and like just some some great visuals and some very good performances Mm -hmm. so for me it was just a 40 minute like fun time and like a lot of people are saying it's the worst one like on my black mirror video everyone's commenting metalhead like metalhead and like the thing where i say that um metalhead's better is that the fact that like <coughs> sorry it's not trying to make say have like this social message and it's it's really very obviously just a sh- a very simple story yeah 
and that's it. And like, it knows exactly what it is. And like, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. But like, it doesn't make it bad because it's not trying anything and failing at it. It's doing exactly what it wants to do. Yeah, I don't think it was. I give it credit. I don't think it was made poorly. It was just really boring to watch. Like, I did not, I didn't have a good time watching it. I didn't feel invested in it. I thought, I, I did not like the dog. I thought that was kind of. I was fucking terrified of that dog. Really? I like. Yeah. It it's... was so OP. It could like do anything. And it was like everything made sense for me because it felt like in the world that I was in, everything was built to be accessible by these things. Uh-huh. It felt very much like a ter- Terminator homage, the whole thing. And I really love Terminator. Yeah. So it could be that, the fact that I really love Terminator is like a part of why I like this episode. But, um, yeah, I just, I, the ending worked for me as well. Um, the second it started, I was like, kind of like really invested because I was like, oh my, I was just like, okay, so like a Black Mirror episode started with like, like the cars moving, like they're going somewhere, like immediately, like things are happening. Mm-hmm. And like, if you compare that to like Archangel or Crocodile, it's like, like very slow. And like, they're immediately going somewhere and they're doing something, but they're not going to tell you what they're doing. They're not going to tell you like what this world is. And they're not going to tell you anything about like these characters' relationships to each other. You are just going to watch these people and you can try and guess, but they were not going to tell you. And for me, I was just immediately like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm finally watching an episode where they're not like screaming everything at me. And I feel like I have to think a bit to like actually pick up on all the different things happening. And then this thing just comes out and immediately kills two of them, like instantly, like with seemingly no effort at all two people that like had a character and had like personality and had a clear relationship with this woman. And then it's like immediately like, is she going to die? Is she going to die? Like what's going to happen? So, so for me, I was just, I, uh, I just had that attention straight away and I was just excited by it. Um, and I'm, I think I just find it confusing why so many people are so disconnected from it. Well, I think, it's not really a Black Mirror episode. You know, it's not, it's, you, it's just, you just watch it. You don't think about it. You know, I think like, it's the way I see it is I see it as white bear done better without hmm. a twist ending. That's how I see it. Well, they tried to, to cram in that twist. So I've heard I a mean, couple of different theories about the bears at the end. Is that either right. they were lied to, and that's not what they're trying to get, or they're getting the bear no, for a kid. They were getting the bear for a kid. That's how I took it. But I've heard theories that, because he's like, well, maybe we got the wrong information. And so that was the point of the reveal. But I, I to me, that doesn't make any sense. Like, the, no, it was no, all the about whole thing. Replacing the bear. It's all about, like, being in such a, like, such a like toxic environment such a such a like an environment where at any point like people can just be like brutally killed um how do you raise children in that environment how do you survive in that environment like you have to be a little bit proactive in order to get food in order to get water and like if you have a kid and they have a favorite toy and that's keeping them happy and then they need a new toy um, and you assess that as low risk, you don't, you think you can get in, grab it and get out, then it is something you would definitely do. So for the me, the amount of people that are like, why would you risk everything just for a teddy? And it's like, well, what does the teddy symbolize? And then it's like, do they seem to be like, oh, it's a, it's a dog. Like, I thought we might run into one of these. It, no, it's like complete shock and horror. It's like, oh my God, we messed up. We didn't think a dog would be in there but it is. Yeah. So like, I, I don't, I didn't have a problem with it being for a bear. Like I completely understood that part. Yeah. Um, I was really upset when I saw that. I was like, Oh, see, I, and then I was like, that was great. And I was like, why does everyone hate this? <laughs> that was, my, that was my reaction. I was like, why does everyone hate this? Like, it's not, it's not like perfect because it's, it's so simple. Yeah. 
But like, it's it's just like if you went to a cinema and that just came on, you'd be like, everyone would be like blown away if that just was there. Well, like now if it was in, film started, if it was in color, do you think you would have felt the same way? I think it's just a stylistic choice. Uh huh. And like, I think you could, you could definitely interpret different things. I don't know why everyone freaks out that it's in black and white. Like, I think it's a nice choice. The grading's good. Like, yeah. Well, you could, I think you it could makes see it, better. it as, I think if, I yeah, think if you it was... could see it as, because it's like, it almost feels like it should have been filmed in like a desert, like Mad Max vibe. Uh huh. But it isn't. But like the color, the lack of color in there and the draining of that, like definitely adds to that. Yeah. I think it, um, aesthetic. I think it makes it better. I think if it would have been shot in just full color, it would have not been nearly as good. Yeah, I I'm re- I really want to rewatch it. Um, like Max hasn't seen it yet, so I think I'm going to rewatch it with him and like see what he thinks. You're not going to rewatch Crocodile with him? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to show him. I'm going to just show him the last three episodes and ignore the first three. You're not going to show him USS Callister? That one's worth nah. watching, I think. I can. T- I'll tell him if he wants to watch it. He can, but I'm not going to watch it with him. You're, you'll give him permission. I'll give him permission. Yeah, if he's been good. <laughs> but like, to be honest, like the most viewed, um, I seen that pod is without Max. So like, that is true. I don't think he deserves USS Callister. To be honest. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So do <laughs> Black Museum. Yes. Black the Museum. Dumbest- the dumbest one, but also one that I enjoyed a lot. So, wow, that was a great conversation. It's too bad we disagreed about everything the whole time. Uh, can you tell yeah. me about your YouTube channel? Uh, it's called Nitpicks. Um, check out my review on Bright with Will Smith in. You can follow us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod.